body to the regular school committee meeting of December 17th, 2014. Calling the meeting to order at uh, 6.02 p.m. Um, we have uh, an all new rearranged kind of agenda tonight um, based on some of the input that we had in our workshop. Um, so we'll try this out. Yeah, it looks great. And um, hopefully uh, we'll like it better. Um, and we'll talk more about those kinds of changes a little bit later. But right off the bat, so Talia doesn't have to hang out for too long, we're going to do um, student advisory update from the high school. Talia? So Neshoba has had a great December so far. On December 3rd, Neshoba DECA members traveled to Bose to meet with members of the marketing team. Today was the mock DECA day for the Neshoba business classes. Each student dressed in business appropriate attire and presented their unique ideas and ventures. Last Wednesday, Neshoba participated in the Hour of Code. Many students were introduced to code for the first time, while others made their own games. Following this initiative, a presentation from IT representatives on careers in technology was given during activity period on Friday for interested students. At the school store, students are collecting toys for tots. Everyone who donates gets a free lanyard as well. Last Friday, National Honor Society hosted a gingerbread house making day for kids in order to raise money to sponsor local families to attend Camp Sunshine. And I did not receive the sports report, but I know swimming has um, had two meets and they've lost both of them, but they've had um, like five school records so far. Wow. And um, the wrestling also had, I think, one or two meets. And they had one, and they went they, one they child, won. one student um, made sections. Oh, awesome. Big deal. Is it the first time? I, no. I think last year we had one or two, but it's early in the season, so sorry, Ty. <laughs> <Go for laughs> so, 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 yeah. so to qualify already. Pardon? So to qualify already is exciting. Yeah, it's, yes, it is. So, so that happened throughout the year? There isn't like one meet, like when they get ready for it, and it's just one meet. There's like a baseline, you have to like get up on the baseline to like qualify. Okay. Until you get like so like you have to qualify for like the mid Wachusett leagues. And then you qualify for sectionals, and then you qualify for states. So it's a big deal for them. Oh, wow. But I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I just I want to make sure you had all the information. <laughs> <laughs> and I can add to the basketball. Girls varsity won by 10 points last night. Boys varsity, double overtime game. It was so intense. Lost by one point. <laughs> Thank you, Ty. Um, so, now we're moving on to new business, this is, this is the new part, um, trying to jump right into sort of the meat of the meeting early on and get to some more of the, um, more of the routine things later in the meeting. Um, and that way we might be a little more fresh and ready to go with when we need it the most. Um, so we'll see, we'll get feedback later on how everybody likes it this way. So moving right along to new business. Um, and the first item is the request for legal fund, and I'm going to turn it to you, Michael. Sure. Uh, as I talked to you uh, at our last meeting, uh, so the MARS, Massachusetts Association of Regional School Districts, is uh, looking to solicit funds from its members, uh, districts, for a legal fund uh, to uh, sponsor uh, legal action uh, at the, uh, against the governor. Um, for what they perceive as a violation of a law that was passed in 2010 that stated that regional transportation funds would not be reduced more than uh, the cuts to uh, Chapter 70 funds. Uh, the governor currently is proposing that the total increase for the school year uh, for regional transportation be eliminated, so it would be about $18 million. So. Um, they're asking member districts to contribute to a fund uh, up to $1,000, uh, and, um, and then they would draw on that fund to pay an attorney to um, wage a legal fight. So uh, how many members are there in there this There are approximately 72, 72, 73 in the vicinity. So do they have a lawyer that will do this for that amount, or could uh, to my knowledge, on? they haven't hired one yet, um, but they have uh, a firm that they're looking at. Has this ever been done before? Legal challenges to the governor? Yeah. Uh, not or by this organization, but legal challenges, yes. Yeah. 
so anything of this anything similar to this um i'm maybe not the historian to be able to uh, i i don't know of anything i mean Certainly, you know, for example, there have been challenges to the Chapter 70 funding formula in, in, the, in the courts. Legal challenges? Legal challenges in the courts uh, by other parties, uh, but including um, school districts, individual school districts. Um, have they been successful? Um, one that I'm thinking of that was much before my time um, was, uh, it was, I think in 1997, it was... Uh, is that uh, when Dukakis was governor? It's it's Brookline v. Dukakis, and it was successful. Um, so. Oh, something tells me Brookline is a lot more cold than district schools. I think there was there were many districts that filed on, on uh, as a friend of the court. Um, you know. And they were they were in it with Brookline. I, probably not for, uh, financially, but they sided with Brookline. So, do they have any kind of a plan? Like they're only going to spend so much money, or if once you jump in, you're in it for the long haul? No, this would be we'd be only in it for up to one thousand dollars, and that's it. So. And if they don't use it, they return it. They're going to bill us. Give us a uh, so. Do we need to vote on this? I would ask for a vote, and that way it's clear that Actually, you're dedicating a thousand, up to $1,000 of our legal fees to that purpose. Mm -hmm. So this money would come from already budgeted for legal per fees? Correct. I mean, that's the line we charge it to. Okay. And the idea is that it could potentially return us right. thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands, yes. Hundreds of thousands. Right. But we're covered anyways, right? We're covered for our, our budget this year, yes. This year? So this, yes. is, this will affect the year after that? Right, because we budget a year uh, in advance, so the, the, the amount that we were going to get this year, we would be applying to next year's budget. So we're essentially starting next year with the same revenue for regional transportation as we have this year. But if we did nothing... It's as close to But if we did nothing, then the budget that we have for busing would be the same this year as next year. The revenue for the budget, yes. Not the expenses. So it doesn't... The expenses might be... Expenses might will be more. Will be what? Well, two reasons. The I mean, money we get from the state doesn't go down. But generally, the costs go up because, uh, in this case, we're going to be going out for a new contract, and we've um, been able to keep minimal increases uh, based on annual negotiations within the one contract that we have. But when you go out for a new contract, generally, you can expect increases. And it sounds like from the letter that you wrote to Kate Hogan that she at least received the letter. She <laughs> received the letter. And that they, as one of 74, I think she Correct. said, other legislatures are also supportive of the notion, yeah. Going to kind of be in, right. be in the governor's office's face about it. Right. So is she encouraging a lawsuit? No, no, no. no. So, with that kind of representation, do you do you think a legal action is well? I think it would put it to rest once and for all. It's it's come up twice now, uh, three times. Uh, we prevailed. Uh, just uh, we prevailed the first time by convincing the governor to change his mind, and circumstances happened, so it made sense to be able to prevail. But um, two times since. You know, this keeps being the, it keeps coming up. So if it went to Superior Court and they ruled one way or the other, then, you know, we have to live with whatever the outcome was. Has anyone talked to the new governor? Not to my knowledge. Because, I mean, it, that's on his budget at that point. Well, so here, at, at the time we started <laughs> this, uh, certainly we hope to get going uh, and, and moving it forward. Uh, it does appear that... Um, it now will be in the hands of the new governor. It uh, also appears that the, um, the deficit might be larger. Um, I just read today's paper while I was waiting for the meeting, uh, that the deficit appears to be growing. So, um, so all the more reason. All the more to reason to yeah. see if we can't carve it out now. And of the 74 other districts that are 
involved. That's what we said, right? It's it's like 73. Or, or it was 74 legislators, okay. but it, yeah. We'll it's, round it off to yeah, seven. seven. <laughs> um, how many of them have? I have not had a feedback on that yet, okay. um, so I, I don't know. We were all kind of in the same boat getting our just, December just meeting going to getting out, it out. Now, yeah. So. When do you have to know about it? So the plan was to hit the road as, as quickly as possible. Uh, we were asking districts to uh, take their vote in December so that we could get a number and know in January what, what kind of uh, proceeds we were going to have as uh, I am on the board, local school um, And um, so that's our goal at, at our January meeting to hire the attorney or, or at least put the, a small group together to go after and hire the attorney. So one last question. If out of this roughly 70 uh, districts, 35 of them say, yeah, we're in. Right. So then the other 35 just benefit from. That is the way it happens, yes. Yeah. Um, and what are you on this board? I'm just a member. Just a member. Any other questions? Would anyone like to make a motion? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're on the whole night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got a broken nose, late practice, you know. Oh, Day in the life of the seas. <laughs> your recommendation that we do this? It is my recommendation that we participate. And our legal, oh, the, the money we have budgeted mm -hmm. for legal mm -hmm. stuff in general in our budget is in good shape right now? Yes, we haven't had any okay. for minor consultations. So we have, these. so so it's reasonable that that this will not breach the budget on that right. line item. Right. And it can't go any higher than $1,000, but it might, it might be 500 It might be 500 that seems like throwaway money to me, especially if we don't agree to do it and a majority of the other districts involved do. And I always think that when you're involved in any type of a legal movement, you can make the commitment and you're in or you're out. And I just don't think $1,000 makes that much of a difference. And you could say that if every other district says that, then it won't make that much of a difference. But so does that mean you think we should do it or we shouldn't? Um, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. Because I don't think that it's substantial enough to make a difference. And it just feels too loose. And, I, and, I, and, I, and that's not a vote against you. No. That's a vote against the concept. Yeah. Uh, I think there are many districts that are going to have that same opinion. What doesn't make sense is this is the carrot to make everyone go to a district. Every, you know, I've been to the Hill twice, and, and they hold it out and they say, we want everyone to go to the district, regional district. Right. And the carrot is the transportation. transportation. It's all through the lottery. Right. And then we've got the um, casinos going in, which is supposed to help education. So why aren't they going after those promises? Why are they suing? I mean, those are promises. I mean, that was the carrot to move over. Certainly regional transportation is often the carrot they raise first as the, the governors in the last few years really promoting regionalization. Yeah. And that's one of the arguments that we raise is, you know, what, what is your commit, real commitment to regionalization if the one carrot you, you can offer is never out there. Never out there. And you retract it once it is out there. I mean, right. like, we went from essentially 63% funding to 90% funding in this year's budget. And now he's taking, about, taking us back to 63 well, we never did because he's never going to give it to us. I mean, did we ever get 90 percent? Well, we, we would have if we made we it through this have. fiscal never, year. Never, and that's why he's taken it away because he knew we never had it. We got two. We got one full payment of it. Of 90 percent? Of at the 90 percent rate because it's four. Be 100. Okay. So I mean, it, it seems like they're, they're putting the fight in the wrong place. They being the regional Mars. board. And where, where would you think the fight should be? Well, I mean, basically the lottery and the, and the casinos, which is what they're pushing, and all that money coming in, that was supposed to fund it, right? Oh, 
Um, no, because that, that doesn't happen until after FY15 is done. But that was always the, the premise behind the lottery and the casinos is to help education. Uh, a big part of the lottery is, yes. So does it? Well, they, it's not a dedicated source, uh, fund source, so um, yes. I mean, there are, the state does raise quite a bit of revenue from the lottery. Um, but it doesn't but go to education? It's not a dedicated it source. You know, they have general budget, general revenue budget, and general expenditure so, budget. So why don't we just go to them and say, look, this is what you said it was going to be. Make it what it's supposed to be. I mean, if I did that, I'd get sued. Yeah. Well, and that's what we're trying to do is sue them. Right. Try to hold them to the fact that they promised right. this and they're not pulling uh -huh. through on their promise. Right. And there is a law. There is a law in the books <coughs> that says they are, there are two laws. There's, there's a law that says they're supposed to fund us 100%. And there's a law that says you can't cut regional transportation more than nine, uh, trend, um, more than Chapter 70. And he has not cut Chapter 70. So our argument is you can't cut regional transportation because that's now more than what you're cutting. And so basically they're violating the contract. We so think they're violating the law. The law. The law. That's fine. Yeah. But they don't seem to be They don't agree to that. That's the, the purpose of so lawsuits. Get, lo <laughs> get right. lawyers involved. Yeah. And that's why we want to cap it too. Uh, I, I would agree that if you if you didn't if you said just go into a court case open ended, then it could be a black hole. And there's no uh, there hasn't been any lawyers involved yet, so nobody no. is able to give us a percentage guess of right. how successful they might be able to be. Correct. That would be a nice thing to have, but. Um, so what kind of power does this Mars have? Um, we've been pretty influential. We were able to get that law passed. Um, our, our executive director was a, a pretty in influential um, advocate uh, for getting that law passed in 2010. Tying it to Chapter 70 money? Tying it to Chapter 70 money, yes. Uh, and so, you know, in the last five years that he's been executive director, he's built quite a reputation for advocating for regional schools on the Hill. So you know we are, we are a known presence there, along with MASS, um, the, the larger superintendent association. So MASC wouldn't have any pull. Um, it certainly, I'm sh sure that it the point that we need to have um, folks file as friends of the court or friends uh, to the suit, we would reach out to MASC because a good portion of MASC membership is from regional school districts, so I'm sure they're going to want to proceed in this way. You're saying MASC would want you to do this? Yeah. I, I would think there would be a, a good number of MASC members that would support and file a, you know, a friendly brief in this case because so many of the membership are from regional school districts. I personally think for a risk of somewhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars, if we can estimate that, for the potential to have potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars coming through to the district, I'm not, you know, I don't know, but it seems like a good risk to me. You said there weren't involved lawyers involved yet. Right. So have we consulted law I mean, has the group consulted lawyers to say whether this seems like something we can win or that's what I just asked. Yeah. I don't, we haven't talked to anybody. Okay. At least hasn't come back to the board as of yet. Um, anyone want to make a motion? I, I just don't want to spend too much time on this. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I move <coughs> that. The Neshoba Regional School Committee authorize an amount not to exceed $1,000 toward the Legal Defense Fund organized by MARS to reinstate regional transportation funding to the FY15 budget levels. One second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? 
Okay, if they're standing. <laughs> I'm standing. I'm it's a tough one. Okay. So is that? Is that so four two one. That's what I counted. Mm -hmm. Do we need five to get it to pass? No. No. Still majority. It's still majority. Okay. Okay. Um, leasing of the school van. Um, Michael, I'll let you do that one. Sure. This is, um, we had a budget uh, item uh, from our approved FY15 budget for a school van. Um, we've organized the lease uh, and negotiated the best lease terms. George has uh, provided us with the background uh, on that item. And um, so we're ready to purchase. Uh, it's a 2014 Chevrolet StarCraft. It's a 14-passenger activity bus. Uh, while well, it will be based at the high school, it's a district vehicle uh, so that anybody uh, from any of the schools can uh, take advantage of it. Um, and so this would be a four-year lease for a total purchase price of $46,306. Uh, and the rate, um, he's provided us a draft um, a uh, motion at, uh, at a rate of 3.14%, which is... So is this a lease to own? It is a lease to no, own, correct. It's brand new. Questions? Brand new. And how much did we budget for this year for? Uh, we budgeted 15000 okay. You might remember this originally, we had originally had a full purchase yeah, price of like 45000 and then when we finished the budget, we cut cut it back to the lease amount of 15000 Okay, so the payments for this year would be a little less than that? Yeah, it would be slightly less than that. So it's within budget. Yes. And who uses this bus? Just so this will be used by those activities that are less than 14 kids. So math league, uh, occasionally oh, tennis, teams. golf teams. Tanya Rich gave a really good. Yeah. Um, good you know, it's it's all those small groups that um, instead of lives. having to rent the bus, um, we can do it on our own. So. For example, you know, wrestling does not get anything. They don't get any money from anything. They pay. They mm -hmm. don't. They drive themselves. So if we can get under 14 oh, yeah. kids, they can they fit on this. There's not that they get buses. No, they've never been bused. They were bused last week. They're ready. Mm -hmm. They have. They yeah. have to yeah. supply have. a bus. It's like the yeah, law. Uh, <coughs> you, always, you always drive. You can. There, there are but options for. But yeah, then just the time you're not allowed to drive. They went last bus. week and they offered a bus for the family. Most of the time we tried to transport. They were people, there were not people no, driving, no, so I think he was trying to save money and could use this. I right. Think, for the 14 kids who can't get it. I think Tanya showed how much it would save versus getting a big bus that has one kid on it. But they have to get the bus if right. they can't. And who's authorized to drive it? Yeah. So we'll have a we'll develop a protocol about uh, only people who are trained to drive. Uh, um, Is but there anybody trained yet? What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, because we don't have it as of oh, yet. Oh, really? Uh, There's but so is there additional training in addition to the, don't don't people have to have a, like a special, not for this, that's the purpose for of this one. Student we don't need a students? special license for this particular size van. Well, what about the other vans we have now who's authorized to drive those? Right, we don't need a special license, we do a special training for them. Okay, so those people who are trained for that is the same Good. thing, could do yeah. this. Yeah, okay. but in most cases it's going to be the coach right. or a volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was wondering, the, um, with all the fees and everything everyone pays, mm -hmm. do we ever get a rundown of, of what all that goes to? Well, it's a general offset, so it's not assigned to a particular account. Oh, so account. it just goes into a general fund? General fund offset. What, student activity fee for user fee for sports? Yeah. So the coaches pays for refs, uniform. Can I make a <coughs> Yes, entry to tournaments. Yeah. It's written right there, do you see it? Do you see the picture of the van? Oh, I got off half page. Um. We do. You can get it. Here you go. 
I move that we authorize the assistant superintendent as chief procurement officer to enter into a lease of four years with Wells Fargo Equipment Finance for the purchase of a 2014 Chevrolet passenger bus with the terms described in the memo, memo dated December 12, 2014. Okay, Kathy has the second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Or, when did you vote? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this is a, a late addition to the agenda. Um, a request from the principal of the high school, I believe. Yes. For, um, to change the midterm schedule for January. And Michael, I'll let you explain. Sure. So, we traditionally have had four er, uh, late starts uh, for midterms, uh, and um, he, the normally have started um, we've had traditionally three late starts and they've normally started on the uh, Wednesday Thursday and the Friday he would like to switch them and have them start uh, this is right after the Martin Luther King um, Monday so to have them go the Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday and have a full day on the Friday so it's just reversing the order of the late starts so were the midterms still scheduled for these four days? They're still scheduled for these four days. Uh, so it's it'll, different. it'll just be in a different order. It allows for them to have a better schedule for makeups on Friday um, because it'll be a longer day. Will the schedule get changed online? The calendar would get changed online. Um, and the uh, if they've already posted their exam schedule, which I don't think they have because they were waiting for this, um, it, it would reflect this change if you make it. I have um, a couple of thoughts. I'll just say them out loud. Um, one, I'd like to be cooperative with the principal. If that's what he thinks is best, then I'd like to vote yes on it. Um, my only reservation is that we have a calendar committee every year that works really hard on this calendar, and they get ticked off when we make changes. So I just want to, in my point of view, those are the two issues we just have to weigh. I think if he went to the calendar committee, they'd want to support him as well, though. And, and he was on the calendar committee this year, and he did make sure that the proposal, I understand it, reflects this. So. And has he promised somehow to communicate this to the community well in advance? <laughs> yes, the, the idea would be to have it as soon as he promotes the calendar um, for the exam schedule. So whenever that normally is. is it, it's, but the schedule is public right now. The yeah. I don't believe it the, is. The, the calendar. Yeah, is the calendar yeah. cites when the early, uh, late starts are, yes. And that's a month away, basically. Right. And that people have had that in their hands yes. right here. Yes. Right. Anybody have any thoughts? Well, oh, that's a, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, primarily just because, you know, I know I plan my my schedule months in advance. You know you have to when it comes to kids, it, and if you're going to be out of big kids, town, huh? except that's very true. That's very true. And, and I have little kids. transportation. I mean, yeah, I mean, transportation. Right, yes. They still get their buses. So, right. I mean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Little kids absolutely know. Yeah. You can yeah. all of a sudden say you know who you're going and like, but right. Right. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen year olds, you can say get on the bus. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do it. I think it's early, uh, early enough the uh, time frame to be able to make As long as the right. days are the same, I right. think it's okay. So the only change is the late start. So the only change is Tuesday would be a late start, Friday would be a regular, regular start day. instead of Tuesday being a regular start and Friday being a late right. start. I think as, as, as long as everybody, all the parents and all the kids know, I, I, I don't think that this would be such a difficult change for the calendar committee to, to accept as, as it would be if we decide, oh, let's have a, a full day staff development day on this day right. that was never proposed before. You know, I, right. I, I, th it's I think it's a minor change. This is a minor change, and I think that there, since it's, it's unique to the high school, I think we kind of have to go with, and it doesn't impact anybody else in the district besides the high school. Right. And the buses will still, they'll just 
just start Flip a little different. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the principal's, Principal Graham's proposal to change the late start day from Tuesday, I'm sorry, from Friday. No, Tuesday to Friday. Did I say that right? Friday to Tuesday. From Friday to Tuesday, mm -hmm. sorry. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. What's that? The bus company will yeah. Same number of buses you do. And we'll rest assured that he'll get the message that he needs to publicize it loudly. Yeah. Okay. We'll even get it up before vacation in case people are yeah. already starting to I would suggest that. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of policies up for first reading. Policy subcommittee, who's, who wants to lead the charge on this? Kara. Kara's? Kara's not here, but Nicole. Lorraine's commented on them. Really um, yeah, there was really not a lot that went <laughs> went right. on other than a few, you know, grammatical things here and there. Um, did the second reading of, um, I believe, all of these. This is our this first is your reading. First reading. Right. It is our second yes. uh, policy yes. committee read this twice. Yes. So okay. Where the, um, do we know? Because I don't see the markups in here. Um, do we? Did you put in markups for comments? Did, how do I know which comments were taken or weren't? I think almost all. Yeah, all of yeah. yours, Lori, were. Accepted, accepted all your revisions. Because the one I was confused about was the buildings and ground security. Because I wasn't sure what the point of that was. So basically the point of it was just to clarify that um, we, we have cameras currently in the high school. Um, and that we'd be expanding the cameras to our um, elementary and middle schools as well to be inside the building. That's okay. Re really the only point. Okay, because uh, when I was reading through it, I think even in the comment section, I was like, I'm not quite sure what the... You did. All you, right. You, you asked that. So yes. this looks... I get this. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Right. With the buildings and grounds? Or well, just security in general, only because, you know, I keep running into things where people are getting very paranoid. Mm -hmm. And is that our intention, to make them paranoid? Oh. No, no it's, it's for safety. I mean, they, they do come in handy for folks to have as a way to collaborate around what the different stories are around incidents that happen. But don't you find that it, it's isolating people instead of bringing them together? No. Okay. A picture is worth a thousand words. It can be very clear. But this just isn't about pictures. This is about locking doors and restricting doors access. Are but we already do. do we already do that. I mean, we've used well, that, that's that. existing language. I mean, that's so not that's changed. Locked doors are so different than building and ground security. No, but I mean. But the, really, the only change is that we're, sh we're talking about video cameras in the buildings for our K-8 okay. town hall buildings. Okay. And so Please. I heard a rumor that what's going on next is they're going to put, you know, they'll put cameras in every classroom. No. Don't need those. Are we going to afford that? Well, no. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be a choice from what I heard. Who is they? So who is they? Yeah. they? Well, it was just a conversation that I heard about. Like, who is they? The state. The state? The state legislature. Mm -hmm. The oh state God, doesn't even mandate that we lock the doors, do they? They do not mandate it. They have, they but have some strong I know emphasis. that every parent I know in the elementary school at least would probably have a heart attack if they weren't locked. Right. Right. Why? I mean, I guess. Why? Yeah. I why mean, we went for years. Why do you lock the door of your house? Is it true that it's a state mandate that we have? It's not a mandate yet, but th they do in their report that you had a, uh, you had uh, gave up a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're recommending that all school districts. So they're hire recommending. It. They're recommending. Okay, just wanted to clarify. Yeah, I just want to clarify. Yeah, the difference. There is. between. We don't have to get into that one because we don't hear what I think. <laughs> so, so do we, we have all of the? 
So in passing this, does that mean that we would be buying more devices? It would be, yes. So how many are we talking? I mean, what, what kind of areas are we talking about? What it depends on the building. Um, so generally what we've done is they develop a plan for the ends of each of, of the corridors. Who's One, developing the plan? Uh, Bill Clary. And, and Suchi would work on it. And, so, and they have what kind of background in security? Well, I mean, we have the experience of where they are now. Um, there is a formula. In the buildings. There is a way to do it. I don't, I don't know what it is. No, there is. Okay. Right. You know, that's why I'm asking. I mean, yeah. I just, because the problem that you're going to have is now it's going to the network, right? They are, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so now you're loading the network up some more. Right. And you don't even have a plan in the network. We do have a plan for the network, and the fact, uh, but the only time they go on the network is when we, when we access them. So um, you, you don't have to do an upload unless you, you, you require it. In other words, they're not uploading to anywhere. You have a lot, of, like you always bring up the network. Is there performance reports on the network to show at peak usage? We do appreciate that, yeah. And, and are you hitting them all the time? No. Are you hitting 50%? Um, we do have times uh, that we do hit, uh, like around report card times and things like that. Um, we, you know, all teachers are on all the time kind of thing. Um, but does, does it make sense to do kind of, I mean, because there's so much back and forth about the, of the network and mm -hmm. we have enough, we don't have enough, how do we know? And maybe, does it make sense for us to think about bringing someone in who's a third party and objective to look at it and give us an analysis on where we are, mm -hmm. so that we all have an understanding of, well, school, you guys need it. And our own IT people can do that. Yeah, I, I don't that. think I mean, that our IT people should do it. I think you shared it. I think our, I think it should be an external group that comes in and looks at it from the perspective of what are you using now? What's your formula mm -hmm. for going forward? And um, but we have our own people that we pay to do that. Why would yeah, we pay? Yeah, you don't have your own people. Pay that you pay to do that, you have your own people that you pay to run the existing network. Yeah, but they they probably have a background in networking or computer science or something, yeah. so they should know, like, if you're hitting 50. But I wonder if there's even any people in the area that would help just consult for free and just give an analysis if an analysis is something we wanted to get. You know, it's got to be network people in the three times. <laughs> but I'm sure. It's, if we're not hitting 50% very often, I don't know why there's always so much conversation about that. I'm just well, I was just going to say, why would we go to this effort and hire somebody and pay money to say, and not say 80% all the you're time. You're doing great. Right. <laughs> right. I, so why come in why, why would we do so, that? But I'm confused because you say the report says we're not doing great, and I just heard Michael say that we're not hitting 50% very often, maybe sometimes we're over 50% at report card time. That, that, that seems like a normal peak period to me, but I don't have the data. I'm just listening to two people, right. one saying that the report isn't good and one saying it is. So maybe if we just got the report. Yeah, we, we shared it at facilities, so we'll, okay. we'll just give it to, we'll put it in the packet next time for the school committee. I think we need to get that on track. I agree. I agree, too. How um, many networks any, are there? Like, is there multiple networks? So, yeah, we're talking about the policies now, right? Yeah. yeah. But so, so the only, the only place where this where the network becomes involved with this is if we were to download or to be accessing the cameras. Correct. Like, camera, knowing what we have at Stowe Community Park, you know, these video, you don't, they're, they're fairly reasonable to, hmm. to install a few cameras in right. each building and the, the Right, it's not, a, it's not a big expense. Right, and and so and those are going all the time. Like at Stowe, they're they're going to like a DVR all right. the time. Correct. And if you want, you can log on to a. I mean, people who ha who are authorized can log on to a specific site to access what's going, what's being recorded by the cameras currently. Correct. That's how our system so works. And it would be good to spot check if you have one. And the doors are already locked. Correct. So, any other things from the policy subcommittee that we should be alerted to or aware of on these four policies? We are talking about meeting more than once a month for the next couple of months while we hammer out a survey um, recommendation, figuring out how we're going to 
administer surveys or maybe some other sort of feedback loop. But great, we're thank not you. There yet. And this was just our first reading, so we're not voting on anything. Right. Um, any other discussion or can we move on? Lynn, you're giving me an eye. No, it's fine. I mean, I just you know with this with this policy or this is a policy. This is a policy. It's a policy. You are increasing the budget, and I was kind of hoping that you would put numbers to it. It's your plan, and let us know what's going on because you are increasing. I can the budget. do that the next time. I wonder why it doesn't fall into facilities. Okay. So you've made it out of that. We're going to move on to old business. I hate to call it old business because it doesn't feel very <laughs> old. It doesn't. Um, district improvement plan for um, the coming year. Um, and we've um, had an opportunity as a, as a group to meet with a facilitator, a workshop leader who's worked with other districts on district improvement plans. Um, I think it was beneficial. Hopefully others agree. Um, and I know I went out afterwards and looked at a bunch of district improvement plans for other districts just to make sure that we're on the right track um, because that seemed to be the question at hand is, you know, are we doing this like other people are doing it? And what I found personally just by Googling district improvement plans in the state of Massachusetts, I found that there, there's a million varieties. Yes. It comes in all shapes and sizes and I was um, relieved and happy that ours is a sort of a cut to the chase model um, because a lot of the ones that I saw were like 70 pages, 50 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and they were more like our uh, NEASC um, <laughs> report than they were like our district improvement plan. Um, but like I said, I found that to be a little bit of a relief um, that we didn't have such a, such a document. Um, so I don't know, I was just, that's throwing on my um, my two cents on that. Anyone else have any? My uh, two cents is I think it's gotten a lot better, and I'm glad we took the time. I think it. I don't think we can keep waiting, so I think we should take a vote. Um, and I think we have next year. We can even do better, and we can start a little earlier. That's my two cents. I would like to thank you for putting this document together. This is, in comparison to what we have been working on, um, much um, <coughs> easier and um, and inspiring. It, it, I appreciate all the work that that went into this document. And before I, I vote to have it, uh, to adopt it, I just would like to to say, you know, for the future, when we set these minimum standards, um, consequently, when a student achieves these standards, we feel like we're done. And um, without getting too emotional, I don't want to feel like that our job is to shore up weaknesses when our um, when education should be more about. Um, should be about more than just achieving a minimum benchmark. Thank you. Are you saying we're going for a minimum or need more? I'm saying that we don't, right now, support the exceptional. Okay, I'll agree with that. Um, and can we? My my impression was when, when we sat down with Dorothy, it was process and format, and we this is much easier to read. Could we quickly go through these one by one? Because you know, for me, in goal I think it was two, um, student growth, two A. Um, went towards seemed to be student growth, but to be seemed to be more about um, teachers. Right. So, 
Yeah, well, 2A is for the teachers too. Yeah. So how is that showing growth then for so the student? I mean, there's not there's not a lot of student stuff there. Right. So they're actually both about students, even though I mean they're intertwined. Mm -hmm. um, district determined measures actually are about student growth. And that's how, as part of the evaluation system, we'll be measuring um, educator impact uh, and having conversations about what curriculum work uh, we need to do and what kind of uh, enrichment we need to provide and, and move kids when, where we need to or remediation where we need to because I think we need to have more conversations about getting as close to the individual student as possible. Um, so that's where, that's why this is about, this is here because we will have a better sense of student growth through these DDMs um, because every teacher has to do them in every content area and um, we'll have more data around kids and, and growth during instructional time. So, it, you know, it's live, it's during that, that peak, during that year so teachers can respond to it and address it and work on it. But what struck me in, in reading and this is going to go off a little bit, and then we'll come back. But reading the ones like Conquer Kylo and everything, okay. you know, I'm reading it, and it's about, you know, the students will show growth here, they'll show growth here. Um, we're going to do this to, you know, we're going to increase this by 80%, or we're going to get everyone to 80% or 90%. And, and then as they work down, they get more towards other things, like students are first. Ours aren't student first. You know, and I'm, I'm like, wow, do we have the, the wrong focus? And then I'm reading, I'm saying, okay, well, let's, Maybe we hit them one by one. Maybe it's there and I'm just not seeing it. So, the But what you're talking about, even when you talk about the DDMs and everything, I'm not seeing, you know, like what you talk about the excellence. You know, where's the, where's the ingenuity for the kids? Where is the, them stepping outside of, and we ask them to do it, mm -hmm. but we don't ask them to do it. It's almost verbal, but not, there's no, well, we're asking them to do it, but we're not expecting them to do it, I guess. There's no, there's no bar. We're, I'm not seeing the bar. So in the individual school improvement plans, you would see more of a bar because they're respective to the individual school scores. But then, but then now you, if you're doing by the individuals and you've got bars, yep. now, you, you know, now you're back and we can get parity because you've listed that parity is important. Right. So, so we've targeted what the parity should look like. So the bar, the bar will be the same and it will be where their starting point might, will look different. So next year, when we look at our DDMs, we'll have more of the individual student data that we'll be able to do more of what you're saying. Depending on where Carl Carlisle is with DDMs, they may be a year or two ahead of us because they were part of Race to the Top. We were not. Okay, so can we can we hit these kind of one by one That's and not just yeah. do them as, a, as an overall? Because again, when we look at some of the information coming in, I mean, you know, we're shooting for excellence, and then we've got the MCAS scores, and we look at the t different individual towns over the past five years. We've kind of lost the edge a little bit, and I, I don't. Maybe it's in there, and I'm just I, not seeing. I don't it. know if we should do one by one again. I we've done know. one by one, and and but can I finish? Let, for let me finish. I have. We've done one by one. This is this year's. We're not gonna. We're not gonna go a, a hundred times over this. To make it something that that, that 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 we might love to that the nth degree, I think next year when we start fresh, if people find there's something big missing, like maybe your thing that you really find missing that's really big and speaks to you is, we should have had something about students at the top of every one, or we might not be. Uh, I feel very strongly about what you said. I don't feel like we have enough in here about propelling our kids, not being an okay school. We want to be that excellent school. That That's where I feel with these goals. I don't think we can get to that level, you know, this year. We're already in December. You know, this is this year's goal. So we have to move forward and take steps. I think we took big steps this year. I'm proud that we have, you know, baselines and I'm proud that we have better indicators of success. I am proud that we're all talking more about the same thing that we're wanting, um, but I don't think we can sit here and go through each goal again, one by one, personally, because I want to I want to try to focus on, are we meeting the goals? Are we even trying to get in two weeks, you know, not two weeks, but in two months, say, Michael, where are you? It's been two months, tell us how we're doing. 
I don't think the goals we are, you know, relaying out to the school community and within the school councils, we can urge urge them, you know, within these goals, what works for your school personality is we're we're looking for excellence within these within these goals. But we're for literally students. after we're we're a third of the way through school. But I hate to take a vote on something which you say. So if we, we go have through, goals, but then they're, they're, they're not showing excellence, they're not propelling the kids. Then if we wait this, until we, we go through each one and we do three more meetings of this, it's going to be half the school year. And we have no goals. I think some goals and doing better job at goals is better than no goals. And sitting here for another two meetings going through each one. That's my personal opinion. And this is only, when you come down to it, we're talking about our goals for this year and we've We've got, I agree with you that, that we've, we've, we're going to be starting this process again before you know it. And um, it's, not like, it's not like right now we're setting the next 10 years. Um, the next nine months, right? Not even. Not even. Not even. Not even. Not even. Right. Not even. Not You'll be back at this in June. Right. Right. And, right. I think, right. and I, 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 at this point, I think we've spent so much time on this. I guess I feel like we should we should go with what we have with an eye to looking at what's lacking when we when we're in June or whatever evaluating how we did this year and and sort of and, and instead of just like being oblivious until we it's time to do our, our district improvement plan next year our focus when we evaluate should be okay what what kinds of things we can have that part of that discussion be what we think we need for the next set of goals so that it doesn't get lost or forgotten over the summer, you know. Well, I also think that we need to keep in mind that this is a document. It's not our persona. It's not, it's not who we are. It's not what we're all eating, breathing, and drinking every day. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's, a it's one facet of it. It's a document. Um, and I, I agree with Kathy that I don't think we should spend any more of our time in this arena going over each of the goals. I think we should be more concerned with having the goals being executed and worked at than, rather than plowing over them. I mean, you know. We have plowed. We've, we've plowed. We've plowed a lot. Um, and um, We have. And, I, and, and I'm going to jump in if you're all set. Yeah. Um, and I suspect I'm going to be in the minority on this. Um, but it, inherently, I think it's, it's disheartening when people talk about how much time we've spent and we've spent enough time. I think that that's disrespectful to the process, especially given the progress that's been made. And I think I even put in an email that I appreciate what you did with this document because it's so much closer to something that I can feel comfortable saying I believe in, because as soon as this is voted in, I own it. Um, but there are two areas that make me uncomfortable. One is, um, and I know that folks don't like to talk about MCAS, but it is a bar that's set by the state, and the state does measure us against it. And my assumption is that funding is somehow related to it, um, but MCAS has a big impact on where we're placed in the state. Mm -hmm. And our MCAS scores have not progressed. And in fact, in Bolton, our MCAS scores in the aggregate don't look good. And I think that's a disservice. And I don't see anywhere in here where we talk about similar to and I didn't I didn't know that's what you were going to bring up but actually it's very similar to what you said which is and what you've said in the past we're kind of pushing towards the mediocrity and as soon as we get to that mediocrity level or mediocre level it's like whew, okay let's look at something else instead of finding ways to push the students and I think that's what is the mark of an excellent school system so we need to get there I also, you know, on a much more um, lower level, I'm not comfortable with goal number four because it focuses on a website and it's what is, I, I know, 
4A is about a website, and then we talk about, it's, it's like one little nugget of a bigger issue. Um, and I don't even know if issue is the right word. We talk about a website. We talk about getting people training for a survey, but we never talk about a district-wide approach to sending out information and pulling in information. And I think that that is, I think that's a mistake because I think we could be the little bit of effort, we could be a lot more effective with the messages going out and what we're taking in so that everybody's on the same page. But the MCAS thing not being in this document is problematic to me because it has an implication. Um, it's been brought up um, by Bolton's Board of Selectmen. They're not going to let it go, whether we like that or not. Um, and I suspect it's going to be something that the other towns look at as well. All in all, I'm really happy with where we've gone. I still have some questions. I forwarded it out to everyone. Whether we want to address them or not, certainly up to the rest of the group. But now, I just think that MCAS is not here. We're approving mediocrity by not pulling out and elevating something with measurement. Isn't that what Voltu is doing? 2A? See if something was lost in there. They just monitor. We could have that we would be a level one. Oh, so it is in the work plan. I, so it's in our it's in the work plan to be identified as a level one district. Um, as an overall, um, and maybe that's not large enough. But so we could elevate that back up. And level one is all about MCAS. Level one is all about MCAS. What's the same? Yes. Okay. So it's under one. Uh, it's under uh, goal number one. So I appreciate that. What I would prefer to have seen is an actual commitment. Right. I mean, that work plan is, is what we work by. I mean, so that is our goal. That is where we want to go. So elevating it up into the goals makes sense. Um, and we can certainly edit it. But if it isn't here, we don't know. It, to me, I look at this as a complete document. So I mean, this was supposed to be a, to make it more understood understandable as to where we were going. But it needs but a standard its own. And it does in the work plan. It's very clear in the work plan. But let's let's elevate it to the vision. I mean, let's put it right there. I mean, we could put it in 1D. All learners will have access to effective uh, strategies to access curriculum and go beyond to become a level one school district. That's not what it says. No, I know. I just... That's what I'm editing it to be on the fly here. Well, I I think you know, I think if you're gonna do the vote, just do it and I think if there's pointed questions we should answer them if you have pointed questions. I just don't think that we should go through each one and talk about each section of each one again, personally. I think if there's questions, I like that addition, you know, we could do it in are there other um, are there particular questions that you could bring up, Lorraine? Well, I, I have an issue with one C. I mean, unless there's something in the work plan that's just not being shown there. I mean, are we just doing more of the same, or are we looking into other options and areas? On one C. On one C. We're looking at a lot of different things. Um, for social emotional, especially at the high school. <coughs> but it's one of those things where, I mean, we need to be able to see that there is something that can be shown as progressing. Lynn, this is about goals. This isn't where the specifics get written. I can't tell you because we're, we're exploring, we're researching, we're piloting some different things. This, this is about the big ideas. This isn't about the work that the principals or I am doing on the ground. 
so that's in other not words, what this plan is for. If, you, if, if one of the goals, one of the components of, is this the word plan? <laughs> no. <This> is <laughs> what is this called? What's the vision, I think? Ah. The work plan is the old one. Okay. The, so The original one. Okay. Okay, so if in the work plan, in order for me to feel comfortable, it said something to the effect of, um, you know, our our MCAS scores were going to improve by 10 points in whatever subject across the district or a range of points across the district, that would make me happy because that would show a commitment to understanding where we are and where we think that our district could be, right. especially given the, the either, you know, it's been a plane, a standard plane, or it's kind of gone, gone down a little bit. I. I'd like to see that. I think parents would like to see that too. That right, and and that's in the individual school plans. You know, we, I looked at it as we want to be a district that's the level one district because all of the things because there, there are different factors not just by the points of the test but other factors that right. elevate us into the level one category. And I want to give credit to all those different factors, you know, including kids that get recognized for advanced work. You know, that we move kids to advance, so we get credit for that, and that's. So to me, it's a bigger win okay. when we do a level one. But the school plans will have more of a uh, dedicated, we're going to go up 10 points in math. So who votes on those? The school councils. See, I don't want to, then we don't have any influence over scores, right? But why should we when this is a district? I don't necessarily want to have influence over every single school just as a district I just want to see the MCAS scores elevated and and I then we and then <coughs> that is the charge of the individual schools. so the, the school councils would have that in there so what do you give this what do you give the school councils as a directive or a Michael's directive in order for them to do that so we tell them I tell them you tell them that you want to be a, we want to be a level one district. Look at your MCAS scores and what do you need to do to get there? What what are the what percentage of kids are being moved into advance? Set that goal, set that bar, because that's where the work happens. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I understand that. Rather. So you know, from your perspective, I think what you are saying is you want to be a level one district. I want to be a level one district. I think we could and should be there. There's no reason why we. Given all of all of what we invest in education from all different angles, there's no reason why we shouldn't be. So do we tell the level that was one right schools? Right. Yeah. So do we tell the level one schools at a level one that, that they're okay, or do we ask for more? No, they because they level one you're not guaranteed level yeah, one, so you have to continue right. to work at it. So there there are still things that within their within their um, individual categories they have to continue to work at. They can slip out of level one just like that. So that's an annual effort. So if we have a goal down here that we are kind of level one school, then the school council have to put in their goals of how they're going to get their school to be the level one goal. Right. That seems to cover it. Right. And Michael, in your um, work plan, She's got all the She's got it. I mean, just because you read it doesn't mean you. <laughs> um, see, I like this. I just don't like this. And in the work plan, it says by 2015, structure consistency in all district communications. Right. So it's kind of open ended. Yep. So I'm kind of not comfortable with loosey goosey stuff, but that's kind of, I'm more comfortable with that than I am with these because these are just pieces of what would roll up into that. Correct? Right? So you like right. things that are more measurable. And in the work plan, they're more measurable. Am I understanding you correctly? In the work plan, no, they're not they're measurable. Particular, right? Well, some of it is, but... I do appreciate the responsiveness, though. Thank you. Is there 
someone ready to make a motion or other discussion before we do so? You can do, still discuss after a motion's on the table. And the reason we have to do this now, other than we've been going around and around in circles, which I don't think we've been going around in circles, I think we've actually kind of moved. It's been a nice trajectory. I really do, and I think it's impressive, but especially given the personalities in the group, but <laughs> um, why is it important for us to do this now? Because the budget's going to be determined based on it, it uh, and it will, it will, is there enough in here that would create a problem? So if we, we have, have been working under the assumption, other than semantics, the basic elements are we're, we're going to stay true. So you know we have our work plan and we're following most of that to, to get there unless you added something. Um, so you know that's been helpful to us and, and, and we're trying to build next year's budget based on <coughs> the general tenor of the conversation that I'm hearing now because you you won't unless you change dramatically you, you won't change the basic direction in June okay. I mean because the idea is to continue on uh, you know maybe with an added step and we can move resources around to make that but FY 16 budget would be built off of this document because I guess one of the things I'd like to know is and you may and the answer may be that comps but of, of everything that is in the proposed plan, what are the areas where we, we should be aware that re realistically we've got to come back and ask for additional budget because in order to implement this? And, and I'm not asking you for dollar yeah, figures. No, I understand. I, I, think there, I think there are dollars or there are either new dollars or existing dollars that will be continued that are attached to each one of these in some way. So where are the new, just... New just, dollars? Yes, please. Uh, well, certainly around 1C, um, there will be new dollars um, okay. in some regard, um, especially at our high school. Exactly, what's that? Pardon me? Is that Again, I'm not. Sp I don't know yet. Uh, yeah. I'm waiting for a subgroup to report out. Yeah, just if we um, just give us your feel. Yep. One uh, B, um, which is around the science, there'll definitely be yeah. new dollars around new okay. equipment and soft uh, and uh, materials, books, and so forth. Um, 2A and 2B, there are, it, it's going to be continued dollars. Mm -hmm. um, this is a huge um, st staff uh, initiative in terms of time for our staff to understand the DDM process. Mm -hmm. um, so there's money there. Helpful, yeah. um, probably there'll be continued dollars in 3A mm -hmm. and 3B, there would be new resources there. Uh, 3C, I'm not oh, expecting any that. dollars there. <laughs> I, I don't think we we need well, to not given where for we next are. Year, yeah. Right. Right. We wouldn't anyway, unless we did the uh, a feasibility right. study would be the only thing. But I don't think we're ready there during the course of F okay. seven, uh, F16 at least. Yeah. Um, 4A, 4B, we need to, we really need to look at our website and who's hosting it and get a, a more modern, which may have some dollars associated with that. And it will, because it's big. It's big. We need it to be responsive. And well, not res responsive. We need it to be um, ADA compliant, and there's huge cost to that that we haven't even begun to tap into. So is that helps me understand why you put this yeah, here. Yeah, it's huge. Because I'm looking at this from why aren't we looking across the district at the way we communicate to people and being more consistent. Yeah. But it, what the reason that this is here is because the website is broken, or I don't want to say that. It's not broken. It's, it's not broken. It's just but awkward. if it's sub, 
acceptable. It was, but it was just recently redone. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, but we, we, we just learned about new ADA requirements that we have to have that it has to meet the ADA. For, 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 for hearing impaired and I don't know enough yet. I'm just learning about this from experiences my colleagues are going through, so I could really tackle this. We're going to look into it. We have a colleague that's going through it now, and it's been difficult. So I think those are the ones that would will be new dollars that you'll see. Okay. Well, that was helpful. Tracy might have some new dollars if we do like that modular thing I think you're going to talk about later. Yep. Yep. True. So. Any other questions or points of discussion? motion. Lorraine, were your questions answered? I believe. Okay. I, I would, I'm just going to go out there and say I think we're on a great thankfully a great path and I would like one more work, working session and I know that that's not comfortable for some but that's okay because it's my opinion. Is that a motion? No, it's not. It's an opinion. Make a statement that when she put in both of you No. I move that we approve the district improvement plan as presented tonight in its final version um, to use in the remainder of this year going forward till June. Did we add that MCAS piece, the level one school? Oh, the so level school, one school was in there. It's in the work plan. It's, it's okay. It can be I added say to I one. Read it. All right. Yeah. Um, you can add it uh, to as I read it. Um, one D fits perfectly. Um, Kathy, did you second? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. I want it with a thing in it. No, I. I didn't know that. She wanted it in that, in this document here. In this yeah. mm -hmm. the level one school put in one, what you just said you could. She wants it up here. I thought we just clarified that it is here. It, it's, it's in the work it's plan. It's in the work plan. She wants it up here in, in this 1D, as I read it out loud, putting it okay. there. I thought we were, that's what we were agreeing Okay. It has amended. Why don't you make, make a, a motion another motion? to the district improvement plan as presented with 1D, including the level one school. I know that's not what I Sorry, I misunderstood that, Julie. So the first okay. motion... It still counts. It was voted and it's, it's there. Sales. This is the second motion. Yes. I want as amended. Did you already second? One day. I no. seconded. And I don't... You know, I appreciate the fact that you think that we've looked at it too long, but it's such a... It just doesn't seem to be the right reason to vote. I mean, I, I, I don't, don't. I agree. I don't. That isn't the reason to vote. I don't. I totally agree too. I don't think it's. Be, I'm voting because I, I am not voting because, because you've done it too long. long. That is absolutely, absolutely not why I'm doing it. Me but either. almost, e e almost every conversation is a vote. I mean, the only shining star is you know raising to a level one school. Um, I, I would like a little more beef in this thing. I mean, a little more. Did you? You looked at other. Did. Did. Do you have specifics that you like added, like a specific thing, besides? Mm -hmm. we, well, we're looking at, you know, we put four, and, and we're looking at, you know, improving the school, improving the space, improving the, the, the assessments, improving the way we track everything. And the only thing we have for excellence in students is level one schools. 
So what do would you like to add? Is there something specific? Like, do, do you want to add another goal? You know, I'd like to see more of incentives for students to, to show that they've got academic excellence. You know, I'd like to see that, you know, what are, what are the teachers doing to prove that they are, you know, at the top of the game, you know, and they're continuing improving. And I think the DDM work will be a lot of that, definitely. But the DDM is for the students, not for the it's, teachers, It's for right? both. It's, it's to really... And then the DDM won't be done until, two, is that the yeah, one Well, they're, they're being done now. They're being done throughout the course of the year now. Um, and they'll be completed in 2019? No, no, no. They, they have to be done every year. So if, so if, if it's, not, if it's not the DDM, is there is there something else that we could add that would have, like, I'm just trying to get to what is it? You know what I mean? Well, like, what is it? But it, you know, I'm not even sure because now you're, you're flipping around. It's, it's not, maybe not flipping around. Maybe it's not understanding. But you're talking about goals versus visions versus work plans. In, you know, I'd like to maybe steal some things from other schools that other school districts are doing. Um, that they've done really well with. So, um, so I totally agree with you. But like, so, so in my experience, I do system implementations, and it's better to go live with something, and get better, and do um, upgrades than it is to never go live and try to get the perfect thing. It costs a lot of money. It doesn't give people vision for what is happening today. It doesn't get your feet wet. Yep. So it's not about accepting because. We're tired of talking about it. It's accepting because we've done a good job to now, and we have plans to get better next year. Because I hope these have more of what I feel is important in it. But at least, we're, it's just like having a baseline. Without a baseline, we, and I also want to say, accepting we're doing it, to ourselves, it doesn't you know? mean that our work is done this year either. No. Oh, absolutely. You know, we we will continue to meet, and we will continue to. But no, if you actually happens, won't, but if because you happens, we're gonna we're gonna be on. here. I will. I'm gonna be here every two weeks. But if it's a specific thing that's upsetting yeah, you, you, then I think that we should try to get that on paper. But if it's more of a feeling, like I have a feeling that I I feel like the excellent in, ch in children isn't expressed here. But I don't know how to articulate that over the next six months. I hope that I can bring that out of my own experience or learn to get it down. But I can't add value on that right now because I can't articulate it. It doesn't mean I shouldn't vote on this. It just means that I have to work harder to get to what I want. So now I'm wondering if, if what you say is, is fun, like you've got an idea but you can't articulate it, and maybe now is not, and this is not the place to do that and kind of hash it out. But maybe if we had like one more working session and we all sat down and hashed out some of these things, maybe we could in the next time have a better feeling for this. Because we come in and we look at it and we talk about it for couple of minutes but we don't collaborate so I would feel okay with that if this was a long time ago but I feel like I can't connect with this because I wasn't in the first meeting where this was done you know what I mean this is kind of like it's like when I read online it said it works better when you have the workshop with the superintendent when you lay it down and you feel more invested in the actual creation for the first time we received the work from Michael and then we 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 didn't go back. We um we tried to tweak it instead of being on the ground with Michael and creating. It. That's how I feel. Next year, I'm hoping that it might be better. But I feel like Michael's done a good job. He's gotten a lot like from where I think we've all done a good job of getting it better than it was. I like what you said, but and I look good. No, <laughs> <laughs> good doing. <laughs> what you say? And I look good. <laughs> <laughs> but what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to vote on this and we're not going to see it again because we don't usually collaborate with this because a lot of these goals are but similar that, to that what they've been over the past five years. But we haven't really collaborated changed. before ever but now we're saying we kind of always we all talked about in in the last three or four meetings that we want to be more on the ground floor with Michael. We don't want it given to us to articulate back. We want to kind of have the workshop with them. But well, should we be done? We, we've grabbed tried that too. I mean was it two or three years ago that we did the workshop in the cafeteria and had everybody contributing to what they thought should be mm -hmm. priorities, and that was and it might have to happen every three and years. That's that's not that's every form. Exactly. That was a form right. of getting a lot of people's input on where the priority should be. But what I really wanted to say, and was waiting my turn, is um, that, and I, I said it once, but it's it's only a document, and I don't believe. I mean. 
bringing the best out of our students and making them the best they can be, that's why we have great teachers. They're really good at that. And whether or not we have goal A or goal C or goal 2D written in here isn't, in my opinion, going to affect the way teacher XYZ influences my kid. And that's then why would we have this document at all? Because basically what you're saying is it's not going to trickle throughout the district. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we can't let it get in the way of the good work that people are already doing. Well, it wouldn't. How could it? Well, if, if a we, teacher is a good teacher, the teacher is a good teacher, Michael's not going to tell the teacher not to be a good teacher. Because if we don't allow the process to move along and we don't allow the budget to happen, then our teachers won't be there to be I paid. You know, Nancy, <laughs> i got to tell you, I don't think anyone, I guess I'm going to speak for myself, I don't think I'm saying that I don't want the budget to move along. I don't think I'm saying that I want to hinder the budget. I don't think I'm saying any of those things that you just mentioned. All I'm If you ask me, what do you think? I'm saying, I think we have done amazing work. I think Michael has been incredibly responsive. And I think in order for us to implement that additional student achievement component that feels just so right, I would like one more discussion, working session. If that's not comfortable for everyone, I'm so good with that. I get it. It's my bad. It's uh, it's my learning curve, and I get that. So let it be. But I don't like what you said. It feels uncomfortable, and it feels like you're taking it into a completely different discussion that none of us have even talked about. Oh, well. But the teachers and the, no, we all want to do the right thing, and nobody wants to hinder the teachers. We love the teachers. We want them to stay forever, the good ones, anyway. But, <laughs> well, so that was my point, is that we want to let our district continue to do its good work. Yes, we want to improve it as much as we can, and we've had, like you've said, we've made improvements to the plan. Everybody's been putting thoughtful effort into it, um, which is awesome, and it's way better than just saying, yeah, 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 let's go with this. I'm happy that people are putting lots of energy and effort. That's that's not my point. That's awesome. What, what I'm saying is now that it's time to start in on the budget, and we need to keep moving so that our our district keeps keeps moving, keeps working, keeps being able to do the good work that they do, that we need to say, okay, we've we've done a good job here, now let's move on so that we can do the next step, which is get to work on the budget, so that we can continue to operate as a good district. But that's what we just asked Michael, is another meeting going to hinder us? And he said, we're kind of moving where we need to move anyway. So if you don't want to do it, I'm just saying one more working session would probably solidify it for me. If we don't want to do it, I get it. It's okay. That's what, But I don't want it to be oversimplified as Let's to we're hindering the process. Maybe we should vote. Well, actually, something you said struck me, and it goes back to the, um, the MCAS scores and when you see them laid out. And at Bolton in particular, um, they did okay with 16 kids in a classroom, but once those classroom sizes got up to 20, they didn't do so good. So, you know, you, you talk about, you know, was it the teaching style, was it the small classes, what, what was it? So, you know, and I found it very interesting, and I, and I understand where you're going, but those big classes are here to stay. I mean, they're not going to go back down again. So totally lost. How, like, how is this related to what I just said? You, you, you were talking about the excellence of the teachers, and you like the. But I'm looking at you know everything kind of into place. But you know, and you're talking about if you just want to talk about Bolton in particular. Over the past five years, you guys haven't fared all that great. You know, and I. You know, I don't know if it had to do with the larger class sizes. I don't know if it's the teaching styles. I don't know what it is. I don't. But I, I just thought it was pretty curious that that's what happened you know and so I would like to take a look at this and find out you know let's give them something to, to work towards you know I don't I'm not I'm this isn't what I do I'm just kind of looking at it and things just kind of strike me but I, you know if we could have a one-on-one -on -one, you know session to go over this stuff and hash things out and talk about it not in school committee I mean it could be a meeting or anything but and just talk about it you know, each one of those things and, and get it to a point where 
and again, I'm still having trouble with the vision and the work and the, I'm sorry. And like I said, it's probably in there. I just, if I can see it and look at it and say, okay, this is what we own. I like that, okay. And, and to your point, and I know that, you know, get it out there and get it moving, but we've had it so long that to take an extra couple of weeks and just dig in and, and actually you know, get to the meat of it because we're really not going to look at this again until we've done everything else then we're back around to it. And then we're back to where we started. With, it looks better. Well, you'll be looking at it again during the budget process and then it, and more formally to change it oh. in June. And we should look at it one more time before then to check how you're doing against your Well, goals. in April, that's true. It's going to be again in April. Which... But I don't want to push you off. Let's just do it. No, I think I think what Michael's saying is we'll look at it, but we're not. We have to vote on. Oh, it. we're not going to change it. No, I don't think it. Once you vote on it, it is right. what it is. Right. I don't want to keep pushing. Until June, when we do it all over again. When we start, it's too bad we can't. But with the turnover, we, I mean, we might lose three people, so we lose the momentum of three people. We have no control of that. Oh, I know that. I mean, I, I just rather do the hard work now and be done with it. Can we try a motion again? There's two motions on. Yeah. This no, is motion and a second. Yeah, one, 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 one of them failed. The first one failed. The first one failed. Who's, who seconded Julie's motion? I think Kathy did. So that's what's, on, so so that's what's on the board is to approve the district improvement plan the way presented with the amendment of the 1D, edit 1D to push the district to a level one district. Okay. So, right, Julie? I think so. We have not taken a vote on that particular motion yet. Yeah. So I'd like to do that now. All those in favor of the motion as Alita just read it. All those opposed? Thank you. It's a simple majority on that. Yeah. So that just passed. Yes. So it folds into the next item in the agenda, but one of the things I can do is have as part of my goals is the very specific NCAS growth that we're talking about. It's just the timing of when we get those reports, it just doesn't quite fit with the, but I'm fine with that if you're fine with that. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so moving along, the next item, B, in old business, um, is the superintendent's goals, which as you just alluded to, are directly related to what we just passed. Um, there was um, a suggestion made at one point, uh, I think at the last meeting, that maybe a, a manageable way to do it is for the personnel subcommittee to um, construct the set of goals based on these district improvement goals um, for to then be brought to the full committee for discussion and or approval or disapproval. Um, is that reasonable? Is that not reasonable? Can we, should we, should we take take a meeting if they want to? The only restriction is we can't have a quorum of the full group. Okay. And, and th I mean, that's the case at any subcommittee meeting. Okay. So like we couldn't have five people at the policy meeting because then we would have a quorum for the committee. Okay. Um, and th that's true for and finance and, and um, I didn't know that. Personnel as well. Could you go as a non-voting member? Or is it still a quorum? Still a quorum. Yeah, I think if you're participating. Right. You can submit items to members of the committee, subcommittee, and that way they have it before the conversation starts. I mean, so like if you're attending as a parent, that makes a little to no difference. As, as long as the expectation is you're not participating. So what's the point of doing it in the par personnel <laughs> oh, personnel subcommittee meeting rather than just to make it more efficient? Just just like to policy is now going to take on the <laughs> evaluation process to make it more efficient rather than having eight of us sit around. So if so, the personnel subcommittee puts together its recommendation. It brings it to us. Um, are we going to be pressured to make uh, to take a vote on it? 
that day? Are we going to have opportunity to discuss it? Is there going to be a time limit on it? How does that work? We would have an opportunity to discuss it. We would have, um, you probably we'd talk about it in one meeting and vote about it, vote it on the next. So it's, 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 it's time, to do time boxing. It's time, time boxing the discussion is what it's doing. Well, if you would prefer to have it to, for us to do it, in the full committee. I'm not. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just trying to trying to get what the what the ad, what the advantages. Of just it. trying to make it more efficient as a process. Is is there any reason why we couldn't? I don't know. As a committee, but not as. Is there any reason why we can't all get together and just discuss it and hash it out, not formally, like any of this stuff, or we can only discuss it here. We can only discuss it. You can have other meetings. Yeah. Yeah. That is a topic, but it has to be a posted, and posted open mm -hmm. meeting. So you could actually post. So we could actually post what you're talking about. This is the superintendent's report. So we could post that there's going to be an open. So we just get down and can sit down with a cup of coffee and just hash it out. And whoever wants to sit in can sit in. As long as it works, we're yeah. posted in advance. And I mean. All of our meetings are recorded. I don't know if we could do that when not recorded. I guess we could. There's no yeah. law saying we can't. No, right? no, we would still have to have some some form of minutes Minute. of that meeting. There's yeah. actually workshops are not required. Oh really? Yeah. No, we don't have to. We just said it's workshop. We don't have to. Yeah. So well, so that's an interesting idea, Lynn. Wouldn't that make Is sense? everybody willing to come out on some? Well, I don't think we can do a morning because too many people work. We'd have to do an evening come out on a, a, an additional night, not a school committee night, and do a workshop. Just on superintendent's Just on superintendent's goals. And you would have to be there, right? I'd like to be, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to be there for you. Elliot does not have to be there. It doesn't have to be formal, right? It could just be a loose. It, it can be like a workshop, a much looser setting than right. these formal We just wouldn't vote or anything on it. We'd right, exactly. Right. I mean, it would be, it'd be like a personnel good. meeting because with everyone. Exactly. Yeah. And then it, it wouldn't be timed, it wouldn't be, it would just, and you could say what you want. I mean, it was. Yeah. I feel like everyone has their voice and heard and not rushed. And because this is all new process stuff. This is all right? in January. Well, we've always had superintendent goals, but the so it's identifying what, right? what indicators out of the standards right. that you want to pull out, and that's different. And does it or does it not tie back to the goals? Um, th there should be a connection. Be. Yes, there should that be. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, it does to me, but every once in a while, I'm not really sure. Yeah, no. You know what makes sense? Do you make sense to everyone else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Alita, would you be able to organize us uh, for a night workshop after Christmas? Yeah, it's gonna have to be. Interesting. I think it'll have to be after Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Is that what everybody wants? My only reservation of doing something like this, I think it's definitely beneficial, but also I feel like I trust the policy people to do their job and to get their policy done and for the most part to have it done and present it to me and give me the information mm -hmm. I need instead of discussing the whole thing because I know you guys spend hours and I'm just using it as a policy meeting. So I would hope that if when I'm on a committee that, you know, whoever is there, you're Sort of trust or well, that, you know, have that was confidence in that <laughs> body to <laughs> weed through some of the. That's why we have outside committees. Right. It's it's to streamline it's, the work. I mean, a we bit. can do every little thing we do in a workshop. But it's not a vote of no confidence. On, I mean, it's not. I I'm, I'm just saying that's just sort of playing devil's I think just advocate. The, of yeah, this particular into the superintendent being essentially the one staff member that the school committee right is ultimately responsible for. So I think I think that's that's right, what kind of makes this right. a little different. But I think we just need to be careful about starting to do that for every. Not that everyone's opinion is definitely valuable, but no. But I think it, um, because we're setting for something. So, do we want to nod our heads, take a vote uh, to see if this workshop concept is going to fly? Does there have to be a quorum at the workshop? 
the dust. Yes, yeah, so okay. I think any time we right. eat, right? Mm -hmm. Corn is how many? Five. 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 I asked that question three times. I need to be told. You can't eat as a body, but a corn. I all I you know I don't I don't I I don't have a preference. I just don't want. I just want the opportunity to. Yes. Well, you would have had an opportunity either way to have. I mean, this would be time for discussion and a vote. Except that we're always doing this, so it's tough when it's a big scale issue like that. Right. It's very critical and really important to be, you know, banging yeah, on the clock. So. Either way. Oh, yes, I good. That's a policy. Well, this would have been yours, right? So, yeah, let's so go around the room way, and ask there. if you want a workshop. Kathy? Sure. Anyone? Sure. I'm on personal. Sure. Bring more friends. friends. <laughs> yes. You know, oh, you, sure. yes, you know you do. <laughs> I, I really don't, don't because I have way <laughs> too many days that I'm spending. Whatever. I thought you were asking for it. <laughs> no, I never asked for it. If it Linda. fits into my schedule, I'll do it. Right. Yeah, you're confusing me with Lynn again. No, no, I'm not. I'm sure you're the one who said, no, you are the one who said, I really want an opportunity to have. Yeah, if it's done here, that's fine. So if it's like the only. You want an agenda item that uh, for the goals, and this is not necessarily wrong either. That we can we can dedicate an hour to in a regular school committee. Well, we can have substantive conversation. Yeah. So if there's only five people that said sure, I don't think we should because if one of us can't make it, then we don't have a quorum. So. Four is. No, five is a quorum. Five is Oh, wait, seven of us just said yes. No, we? one, two, three. Six said yes. Well, you were amazing. <laughs> I think if, 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 well, if I can speak for Lorraine, try to tell you guys what Lorraine is Good thinking luck. right now. <laughs> if in a regular school committee meeting, there can be a substantial amount of time dedicated to it in the agenda, then the personnel subcommittee meeting, subcommittee can come up with the recommendations right. and then... That was good. All right, thanks. I think, oh, but I thought that the personnel subcommittee coming up with the recommendations was the part that was bothersome. No? Is that no. the part that's bothersome? No. no. Okay. No, it was the opportunity to have a discussion without cutting the discussion off when it's a large scale substantive issue like that. Right? The time estimates on the agenda are just approximations. They're not anything that we've ever actually stuck to. <laughs> and you may recall that our general cons norms and, and protocols for our meetings was general discussion. We would do a time check at a half hour, but there, we could certainly agree at the beginning that, that whatever would be not even we wouldn't even think about the half hour time check and there's never and just as at Stowe town meeting which at least some of us have been to it doesn't say that you have to cut off conversation at half an hour it just says that at half an hour let's see where we are and see whether we want to continue or whether we feel like we're ready instead of people just sort of going on forever I like what you said at the end of that that's good that works could we do, could personnel meet, try to come up with a proposal, have a discussion here, and after that we feel like we need more time as a whole to discuss and sort of weed things out. Could we then do the workshop yeah, then? We might idea. be yeah, able that's to see if that's, idea. that's needed. Great idea. Thanks. Anyone? Do we have a time frame though of when we have to vote on that? Oh, yeah, Michael, what's that? Well, you, you, you yeah, yeah, the exactly. evaluation has to be done in April. Ah. So but, you, but you can't but set the goals and then do the evaluation the next week. March. <laughs> March. <laughs> March 1st. You got a month. <laughs> you got a so if, you know, <laughs> if, if personnel could meet um, you know, first couple weeks of, of January and then the 28th um, is a meeting night, if we could set aside a bulk of that meeting for the agenda <coughs> to be the, evalu the evaluation process. So it would fit into the time frame. Yeah, fit into the time frame. Meet with everybody. 
and that way it's a regular scheduled meeting. Nobody has to change their schedule. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. You over there? You good with that? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Oh, so that's great. we don't need to schedule a separate workshop night, but we do need to schedule a personnel subcommittee meeting. Um, but she's not dropping the um, designated workshop. This is needed. And right. right. But we don't need to schedule it yet because we don't know yet if it's needed. Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, next is subcommittee reports, finance and facilities. Maureen? Um, we did not really discuss much other than the, the warrants, and there didn't seem to be too many questions on those. So. Okay. The only other thing we discussed is. Modulars that Mike was going to mention at some point. Okay. Um, and Kara's not here. Is there anything else from the policy subcommittee that we need to hear? I kind of feel like we said it all. I kind of. I'm guessing you did. I don't know. Okay. okay. Um, that brings us to the superintendent's report. Sure. And actually, most of my report is is done. We've been doing our code, which is been a great it's a national effort to uh, make kids more aware of technology and and how uh, much of what they work with every day uh, and play with uh, on, on computers uh, how it comes to be uh, so that's been exciting in each of the schools um, and we have some dedicated pictures on the uh, web page uh, to show what kids have been doing um, I think going down right through this uh, we do have uh, I think the town of Bolton has coordinated a uh, meet uh, to look at the um, green road issue um, from their perspective and uh, maybe coming up with some kind of compromise around parking signs. Um, so we're going to walk tomorrow, I think it's at 10 a.m., um, and just see how many signs we need and where they should be placed and so forth. And um, the suggestion was that we'd have some sort of cooperative agreement around they'll put them in and we'll purchase them and we'll, we'll work that out. But we'll take a look at that. Um, and then uh, discussion uh, from the workshop, uh, a follow-up was that we would have uh, some opportunity with staff uh, to have input uh, and tentatively um, talk throughout doing that on a Wednesday school committee meeting, again, trying to mm -hmm. maximize your schedule, um, which would be January 14th uh, to fit into the budget cycle. A um, couple of complications, one is in order to really get staff there, it's got to be an earlier meeting um, because it's just a long day. Um, the other complication is at 7 p.m. we do have a major presentation by Chris Heron that's been arranged for months and months and months. Um, so that's the same night as the school that's committee. That's the same night as the school uh, committee. Can we change that day? Can, can we, we change the right? School committee meeting? We absolutely can, and that's yeah, one of the reasons why. Yeah. yeah. So good. if we did the workshop, you know, four to six, then you, I mean, it makes a full night, but you know. It works out, uh, but if you want to change the night of the, the uh, meeting that we have with staff, we just have to figure out a date and get something out to folks. And who's Chris Heron? Chris Heron is a former Celtics uh, basketball star who became drug addicted very early on in his uh, youth uh, and pretty much throughout his career and um, until he got destitute. Didn't straighten out. Uh, now he does, and one of the things he does is go out and talk to high school kids and parents uh, about everything from telltale signs he's a motivational speaker um, he, he, he did speak to the students last year parents uh, um, and uh, kids spoke very highly of hearing having parents um, speak uh, we just couldn't arrange a parent night last year for some reason it didn't work out in a good schedule so you keep in January 14th though is the um, staff report well that needs to be decided that's great and that I good for the staff. Yeah. Great. I mean, you, we could set the time limit, so like 4 to 5.30, that way you can at least get home or get and somewhere for a dinner or whatever. And so how do you, how do you uh, contact the staff and ask them to participate? Because I would send out a blast out of email. Do you, get, do you encourage them to do it somehow? I, mean, I would, yeah. Is it well, the I mean, whole staff or just the principals? I thought it was just the principals. No, I, I think uh, when we did it three years ago, we invited the entire staff, and I've already asked the association president to, you know, Drum it up and so forth. I didn't give it to I gave it to any shape. Um, I don't know. We had about know, twenty-five to thirty staff. Yeah, probably. 
So, but it was later too. I think if we had it earlier, mm -hmm. um, we'd get them. I wonder if that the night when that gentleman is speaking is a good night because they want to stay anyway, or it's a bad night because so they want to stay. stay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know that. I, I don't have a good feel on. I don't know either. Um, it makes it a long day for them. If right. I can. I can definitely put that question to the association and see what they think, and then get back to you on that. Would that help? I should have thought of that. I yeah. think so. I just. I just want to have plenty of advance notice mm -hmm. for them. I don't want right. them to find out about the meeting two days exactly. before. Exactly. No, I, I want them to leave before break, knowing um, when this meeting is, especially it's so yeah. close afterwards. They yeah. They child care, all those kinds of things. Um, is there any way to tell how many, like, who's participating? Like, is it the same teachers all the time? Probably not. I, I don't know. Who, I, there would be no way unless we had, yeah. did an invitation and had an RSVP. Right. Then we can do that. But yes, I think it's usually the same people. So we'll leave it that you'll check with them and, I'll check with and them, see send us an email yes. with just that information. That. Mm -hmm. that would be great. And, and, and right now it's going to be January 14th. January 14th at uh, 4 p.m. At the high school. Um, is that right? Well, no. The best setting is, is to have table talks, I think, so that you're talking with people and not having somebody come up right. and talk to a panel. Um, and the, the really the best environment for that, the, the two best that we have, because there can be round tables, is Florence Sawyer Cafeteria and the um, Center School Cafeteria. At that time of the night, Center School Cafeteria is being used, um, so Sawyer is the one that would be best. But we could have it at the high school and just make do with the, the well, cafeteria we've, we've there. We've done it in the library there before. We, we could, have, depending on the numbers, that's the only thing. So I, I may have to do an RCP to do it. We could do it in the library. Yep. The library is much better acoustics than. I, I totally agree. Yeah. The cafeteria here is it's really awful. hard. It's awful. Really hard. You yep. can't hear yourself think. Yep. Um, so you want the center? So let me look at the media center. We'll look at the media center and and try to make that happen. I also think it would be nice to go to the high school to encourage yeah. the high school teachers to yep. participate. Yep. That's my opinion. Um. Okay. Um, oh, and anything so, else? Yeah. Yes, one last thing. So um, I had an email from the town administrator uh, in Stowe. Uh, they have two modular units that are attached to Pompey Civic at school, purchased about 10 years ago by the town of Stowe. Um, they had been willing, uh, been looking to try to move them. They have uh, a repurpose committee that has uh, designated Pompey to be used uh, for some other purpose, uh, town purpose. Um, the modulars aren't part of that purpose, so they would like to uh, donate them to the district. Oh. Um, and uh, so, and yay! It's worth. That's right. It can be Shoot. worth something, uh, but the cost to do it, uh, Bill Clary's got a rough estimate of about eighty-five thousand um, dollars, and so that's the cost to move them. That's the to cost move to move, set and up, uh, and reattach or or figure out an attachment process that to the existing great. building. So. Um, He's seen them as late as about October. They're in good condition. Um, these things last for about 25 years, so we get about 10 to 15 years of life out of them. Uh, they're nine, there's two classrooms, 900 square feet, so they're bigger than the existing classrooms that they are now. They're air conditioned, um, real air conditioning, not that big stuff. What's that? No, two. They're two. They already used one set. They're only giving one. So. So, um, so they could be moved over the summer. Um, if, and I'm not asking for a vote tonight, but um, Bill has done very informal measurements that it would fit behind the high school between the two academic wings. Be a tight squeeze, but he thinks it'll fit. But we've got to oh, look at little permitting. Little and, and uh, and farther down, uh, just past where, sort of like in front of the baseball field. So if you were oh, looking okay. from the baseball field. Look, Back to the high school. Uh, where the windows are against the windows. Oh. It wouldn't be against the windows, but it'd be in, in there. Area. So, oh, so oh, right. There's, there's an open there too. Yeah, it's an open area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so this some preliminary work that has to get confirmed up codes and so forth. Um, oh, I see. That we'd have to make sure, but um, if, 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 if the general sense is you'd like us to look at it further, um, I thought I'd, I'd put it before the space committee tomorrow night too to just get their sense of 
is that moving too fast um, or, or what, uh, but um, I think they can always use the space. So where would the money come from? We'd have to budget for it in FY16. I think it would be nice. No, I'm not going to say it. Stove would be a little more altruistic. Are you kidding? We should charge it for them. <laughs> They put, them out, they put them out to bed, and nobody bought. Right. Nobody bought. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. They well, then them. counter. Well, it's zero. It's They're zero. I'm yes. counted enough. No. <laughs> oh, that's right. Thank you, Stowe. Thank you, Stowe. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. <laughs> they do have some value, but but they're only really valuable to schools. And, you know. Let's see. Right. So. So we need more information. You're going to get more information. Yeah, I mean the general sense is if you want you want us to explore yeah, it, we'll explore it, so. make sure yeah. that it can work, and then it'll be in the FY sixteen budget. Um, and they're typically two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Brand new, we Brand new. oh easily. We asked yeah. Tanya because she was here early and she had said, um, "Show me more classrooms." Yeah. She said the only concern is, is it easy to get to because right. they have such a tight time frame. Time yeah. frame. Right. Who is this? Tanya. Oh, she's talked to her briefly because she's from Stone. <coughs> I, asked, I asked her if she was in them. Oh, when she went to Papa Sutter. I was in them. That was it. She said her friends were. Oh, she just said her friends were. She wasn't, but she didn't know. We couldn't. Have yeah. Was there only a seat? Anything else in the superintendent's office? Nope, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Ten years ago, um, she would have been. We know what we're doing there. With the Benemptis. Yes. Okay. Um, correspondence. Yeah. Wow. I know. Did everyone get that letter from? Yeah. I could, yes. And I couldn't open it. Either. Oh, okay. I it was me. So she was inquiring about school choice and whether or not it would um, it'd be possible for her younger sibling um, to attend as a school choice student. Um, those aren't our rules. I mean, those are the state rules. Our decision is whether we have school choice right. or not. Right. right. Which at this point we, we don't for right. entering Definitely. kindergartners. Right. Um, so she was advised, I think, by Lorraine. I knew someone responded, so I was not right about that. I, 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 did, yeah. I did respond to her, yes. But I, I didn't did, know okay. that it was a state, reg, state regulation. Um, so she is mistaken when she says that other school districts, when they are right. dissolving their school choice program, they don't grandfather in siblings. If you either have I, or you don't. I don't if know if they she, do or not. If they are, I don't know if they are or not. But legally, we just legally totally got them they in don't trouble. have to. They don't, legally, they don't have to. Correct. But they can. can. I'd have to get another ruling on that. I don't believe they can. Huh. I thought when we went through right. three or four years right. ago, yeah. remember, we were uh, sitting in yeah. here. I don't believe they can. You couldn't. Because right. it would go against the whole correct. lottery system. Correct. Right. 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 We've been around She's that still, yeah. subject yeah. several times. Yeah. 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 So these other school systems are in the wrong. I believe so. Perhaps, if that's what they're doing, let's not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get them in trouble. Right. But if she would like them to be in the same school system, she wouldn't help them move it. Always an option. I'm sure that helps her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's did anybody else have any other correspondence? I did. I did too. Okay, you so go first. The first one I have one. is the easier one. Um, I, it, uh, someone called and asked me, would we, he, he's on the list serves, but he doesn't get, he wondered if we could put the agenda for the school committee on the list serve. Um, and I don't know if it is, because I said it, it is on the website. It's, on the it's website. always right. posted yeah. there. And he said, "Yeah, but I don't always, ha I don't always have time to go or remember to do it. Is there a way to put it on listserv? Does this make sense?" I don't know. I mean, he's a parent, so we, I mean, we could put it on the um, school messenger. We do have listservs. So we can, we could do the listserv, although they've been sort of a dying art. I think. Yeah, the listserv, he'd only get it if he subscribes to. The right. Listserv. He and does. Probably nobody uses those anymore. Yeah. He does, but maybe to your point, if no one's using it, maybe there's some other. Does uh, is there is there? I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel yeah. here, but maybe if the concern is that people would like to see it if the principals could include a link and in I don't know I'm just throwing it out there but I think the point is um, to encourage us to find a more broad scale distribution system that's already in I place think the websites and include it. What's that? What? I think the website's hard to navigate that's probably one of the biggest 
Yeah. Well, it's buried a little bit. I think maybe yeah. that was it. But but I think more to that to your point, it was just can you just send it to us? Yeah. You send stuff anyway. Yep. Yeah, we can put it on school messenger. With some, I don't know. Yep. That was one. And then um, I got thirty pieces of correspondence about the Apex Fun Run. Mm -hmm. So would you I got some too. Would you like to talk about it? Feel free. Oh well, not if you got thirty. I didn't get thirty. <laughs> would you like <laughs> thirty? Um, um, I'm happy to. I have to leave at eight. So go ahead. Um, well, okay. I'll just present the the. the you're all shaking your heads, but I don't even know what's no, going on. No, I don't know what you're talking about. We didn't about. know about it either. <laughs> um, I didn't know about it until I read about it in, um, I don't know, the school uh, They newsletter. came home with a thing, yeah. They came home with something? Well, yeah. I don't have anybody in that school, so yeah. I didn't get it. So, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know about it until, no, I know, I read it in the Bolton uh, Independent. Yes. That was the first I knew about it. So there's a fundraiser going on at Florence Sawyer School, and um, PAC, parent organization, is running a fundraiser and they hired a company to come in and run the fun fundraiser for them and it's a fun run and the kids run around the gym and they ask for pledges to raise money for how many laps they do and as a part of it they have a team the apex team I don't know if that's what it's called they come in and they do like messages in the classroom. They, they do motivational things and they give little prizes and toys for kids who raise money and have a certain number of pledges. And they make a kind of a competition for them. Um, and um, well, the problems that I heard were several. One was that they were taking away from class instruction time to do this, mm -hmm. giving Every out day. toys. Every day? Every day. Every day, Every day is for two minutes. weeks. Nine days. So two Every weeks. day. Nine days? Oh, yep, nine, nine days, days okay. five to eight minutes a day in each class. Go ahead. But that doesn't include the prizes. The fun run. No, that does include the prizes. That listening, yeah. Um, and so one of the problems was it was taking away from learning time. Another problem was that um, kids were actually doing the fundraising, little kids, because this is the elementary school, um, and felt pressured to be asking mom and dad and grandma and grandpa for lots of money. Oh, and yeah. parents didn't like that. And the kids mm -hmm. felt, some of the kids felt not good about themselves if they weren't doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, where do we get involved? I don't know. I mean, we didn't have anything to do with it. We didn't even know about it. Um, but once people start getting upset about it and complain about it, then all of a sudden we're involved. Um, and they come talk to us. So. Um, I don't know where we go with this or what we do about it or how we prevent it from happening again. Uh, like I said, it, it's not really our thing. We didn't, you know, we don't approve these things. We don't even know about them. Um, you know, the only thing that I will throw out a word of caution, in my opinion, I mean, if we have got somebody who um, finally stepped up to the plate for being a leader in a leadership position on PAC, and if if he or she gets a lot of flack for having organized this, I don't want that to happen either. I don't want it to be a big backlash of negativity on somebody who made some effort as a volunteer. Um, so I think that, in my opinion, we have to be careful of that. But I also think that, you know, yeah, we've got a little problem here if we're taking away from class time mm -hmm. to um, give out yo-yos and say, please, please <laughs> ask mom for more money. Um, I agree that that's not the best use of our right. time. Right. Um, so, and they were that upset. I got them too. You got them too. I got them. Did they do it in Stoughton? Nope. No, no, no. Oh, you no. just get just notification. Everything. No. So, but what struck me is some of the stuff that was going on. It, are they in violation of some policies? And just as an afterthought, when there is a violation of a policy, do we have a policy to follow a policy <laughs> to, that is broken? <laughs> 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 what do we do? Yeah. Do you listen in on my thumbnails? So, yeah. so. <laughs> well, uh, it, there was no violation of policy. I mean, but clearly this this really did not go off the way I think the PAC intended it to go off, or that the principal and, the, and they knew going in um, from talking with uh, the principal that this was not something that. Um, 
they they were really looking at it and looking at it hard to see if it was going to be something they would do in, you know in future years um, and they've received much of the same feedback mm -hmm. so I think that they have learned that they did when I spoke with them they had already scaled back tremendously on the classroom pieces unfortunately it was Monday so I mean, um, and, um, and and even so some of those times were like when they were getting ready to go out to recess or leave for the day or their morning meeting time and much of it is the motivational piece that they emphasized although obviously the part about encouraging them to raise more money absolutely that's what the gifts are right I mean right. that's yeah. that's I remember bribe. back <laughs> right. in my days years ago as a PTO president these were often things that you were approached with to do fundraise for you. The magazine drives, the wrapping paper thing, all had that piece to it of right. like rah rah, let's right. have a pep rally, get the kids motivated to do all this. And I know there was always an option that we said, none of that. We're not doing that part. Right. And of course, the representatives are like, well, you don't understand, you'll make so much. And we're like, no. So, right. but. I think it was probably from bad experiences like this, and it probably hasn't happened in a long time. And if it's someone new with younger kids, you're thinking, wow, this sounds great. I'm making a lot of money from the school. So I do get the sympathy to that part of someone uh, trying absolutely. to totally help out. Their, their end and that uh, is goal the, was the to limit job. the amount of fundraising. They wanted to do it at one time, mm -hmm. get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and it, but and that's a good lesson too. You know, it's you don't a very get good lesson. For nothing. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So, so they, they've definitely learned a lot. It was all the money going <laughs> to the school? I think the parents even know that it's going to pass. It's going to pass. They funded enrichment. No, forty-eight percent goes to the organization. Forty-eight percent goes to the right. Fifty-three percent goes, goes back to the pack. Which is pretty. Fifty-three percent goes back to the fundraising company that's rushing this. Right. Which is not totally uncommon for those kinds of. Right. Right. Like the wrapping paper thing, I think it's the same thing. You know, you get a seven dollar roll. But you, you don't walk into the classroom no. and say, "Okay, Johnny, come on up here," because right. you well, logged well, you, on you last could. night and you yeah. sold I mean, you, you love that option. Right. But every night that. they log in their pledges, so every morning the kids are called up to be uh, rewarded right. for the additional pledges and, the and given a gift. Just and the no, teachers the had their own contests for the classroom. Right, the class did. So, and it was in the newsletter, oh, so-and-so's classroom is number one in grade two, and so it's, it's just like, oh, people right. were taking kids out of schools. And yeah, it was just not a good time. So, so they, they changed much of that by Monday. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's over. It's, it's a over good today. learning lesson. It was done today. today the best fundraiser we ever did, I have to say, is we had an opt-out form at the beginning of the year for PTO, and you said you could be sent all these things home, or you can make a donation now. And I love right. that. Right. I loved right. it too. Right. Because I'd rather get 100 percent of the money exactly. than get all exactly. the other stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of parents feel that way. In fact, too. a couple of parents said, "I'm not participating. I want my kids participating." Here's a donation pack. Right. Right. And that was and, always and an option. Yeah. So that, and I think Stowe, somebody did yeah, Stowe. That's Hale, exactly Hale what Hale The yeah. problem is the turnover with the volunteers for this is right. so great because it is a very But it's the principal's responsibility. Right. job. I mean, it's awful. I'm, you know, it was my least favorite volunteer position. Yeah. Does, sometimes, does the principal have to approve to all of that? I don't, so I don't know what our oh, role is. I mean, is oh, there, I don't. I don't that's don't. our <laughs> plan, you know, oh. what? What do we do about this? Not Michael, does the, the principal, principal have to appro approve it? The everyone. principal does approve it. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been taken care of. Okay. So the principals are handling it? Yes. Okay. I think the poor principal is it glad just it's seems over so too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, exactly. he's, like, he's just inclusive and encouraging and yeah. positive, yeah. and he's. I'm yeah. sure he, this was hard on her. Right. And I didn't talk to him. I didn't even. No, I won't give you a prize. Oh, hell no, you won't. <laughs> and I did just say that. Just <laughs> call Arena for a prize, yeah. not me. <laughs> you get a prize. You'll get a star. Citizen's <laughs> comments? Oh, no, we didn't. We just oh, no. did him. Sorry. I also did get an email just questioning where the money that you were asking for for the Mars fund, where that was coming from. Oh, it's legal. Oh. That makes sense why it is. 
Okay. Other than that, future meeting agenda items. Um, you had mentioned the meeting with faculty. Mm -hmm. So that's done. So that's, that's taken care of. And at some point, we are going to be. Do we want to talk about or revisit the protocols and or, or our meeting norms? Since I don't know if we did. We did not do them this fall. Yeah. At some point. Do it. <laughs> do, we, do we have to do them now? No, no, no. Okay, this this is under yeah, action future. items, future meeting agenda items. Yeah. So is that something we want? It's a heavy load. Those are kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. My picture with <laughs> We can do them at the 28th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Of January. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's new. <laughs> and then Maureen, so what's next? I believe the only things left are the consent agenda, the meet, the meeting minutes from December 3rd, and this week's warrants. Um, we kind of forget since we, <laughs> we usually do them at the beginning, but if there are no questions or concerns, we'll consider them approved. Any significant changes to the minutes? Or is everybody good with them? Can we just remember one of um, the campus progress list for the four terms? At the next meeting, just real quick, and yeah, just to check where we are. Sure. Okay. So we'll at the next meeting do a quick that run. That probably be the 28th because the next meeting is probably going to oh, be the faculty. That's workshop. right. Okay. So the 20th is the day that we're talking about superintendents. 28th, yes. No, the next meeting. No, the next one will be the 14th. 14th will be the meeting oh, with the faculty. We're going to try to move that, right? Possibly. Possibly. I want to really go to Chris Hammond. Mm -hmm. So does the rain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm aware that many people want to go. <laughs> it feels like all the good stuff for high school is school committee night. I miss oh, something really? else, too. Mm -hmm. Not tonight. Mm -hmm. But there have been conflicts in the past. There's been some pretty good conflicts, yeah. Like, so that's that I was like, oh. And since the press has left, we have absolutely no citizens to comment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything? Yeah, they think. You say, please hurry up and finish. <laughs> um, so I guess that leaves only that final motion. Unless there's anything. Well, is there I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Well, we didn't do minutes, did we? I yeah. just yeah. did. Yeah. I just yeah. said. Yeah. From, from our seventh yeah. there. Yeah. I asked if there were any significant yeah. changes. Didn't I? We did. Yeah. Well, I, um, the only question I have is when we, and I'm sure it's fine, because you guys talked about it, but the... Um, Even if it's not, it's too late, we're at a group. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> we, can, we can rescind our cassette of the license. It wasn't. It was the vote. I'm giving you a hard time tonight, I'm sorry. No, I don't mind. <laughs> it's fine. It was the vote for the... Um, Staff surveys. There it is. And what is it that we voted on? Is that your question? Well, I just want to read about to see if it changes the next one. Say that again. You know the staff survey um, question that, that we had? Is that made her question yet? Yeah. Right, because when I read it last time, it didn't sound right. But we talked about it earlier. So the, the um, policy meeting is creating a staff survey. Correct. So, okay, because when I read it the first time, it sounded like there was a question about whether they were going to do a survey or not. And I wasn't quite sure that's what we no, said. Uh, actually, as part of the educator evaluation system, we need to have a staff survey for our next framework, so that works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Ah, so we don't touch one All right. Okay, no fun. Thank you. Okay. Now we. I second it. <laughs> 
All those in favor of adjourning the meeting? And that's unanimous, so. Great Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah.